This is an update to a video that I put out nearly a year ago now. It was all about the mystery of Paul McCartney's Hofner bass, which was missing for 50 years. And I'm doing an update now because it's finally been found. There's an end to the story. So this is the full story, right from when it went missing to how it got found. And you won't believe how far it travelled. Hi, I'm Adam, welcome back to Music Mongoose. This missing bass guitar is my second favourite Paul McCartney related mystery. My first favourite for the record is the conspiracy that the real Paul actually died in 1966 in a car crash and was replaced by a body double. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a full video of that by the way. Back to the bass though, this is one of the most significant bass guitars in music history. It was Paul McCartney's first ever bass and it basically kicked off Beatlemania. In fact, it's so significant that experts believe if it were to go up for auction, it would surpass the world record price paid for the guitar Kurt Cobain used for the famous MTV Unplugged session. Six million and ten thousand dollars, or nearly five million pounds. The bass went missing, and for almost 50 years its whereabouts was unknown. There were tons of conspiracies and loads of false leads, but ultimately it remained hidden until 2023. The bass in question is the rather sexy looking 1961 Hofner 501 violin bass. It's also known as the Cavern Bass, named after the Cavern Club, a nightclub in Liverpool where McCartney made use of this particular bass guitar. He bought it in the spring of 1961 in Hamburg at the Steinway Music House. He bought the bass in the first place because the previous bassist, Stuart Sutcliffe, left the Beatles in that year. Paul was shuffled from second guitarist to bassist of the band. This was something he initially didn't like the idea of. I definitely didn't want to do it, but Stuart left and I got lumbered with it. Later, I was quite happy. Now, at that time, pre-Mega Beatles fame and success, Paul wasn't able to stretch his budget that far at all. I couldn't afford a Fender, so for about £30, I found this Hofner violin bass. He particularly liked its symmetry, being famously a lefty, noting it could be played by a right-handed or left-handed bassist without a cutaway being on the wrong side. This bass guitar was put to serious work by Paul McCartney in the Beatles' early tours and recordings. It appears on the albums Please Please Me and With The Beatles. It's heard on She Loves You, Twist and Shout and a bunch of other early Beatles hits. It was also used in early 1969 in the Let It Be recordings. So yeah, you can begin to understand how significant this bass guitar is. Hofner, very, very happy with Paul McCartney's use of the bass guitar and basically putting the company on the musical map, gifted him with an updated version of the violin bass in 1963. This new and updated 63 bass was used for the rest of the Beatles' career, and is actually still sometimes used by McCartney today. The original 61 bass was relegated to backup. Now, there are certain things that differentiate the 61 bass guitar from the 63 bass guitar. For example, the 61 bass guitar has stacked pickups, whereas the 63 bass guitar has widely separated pickups. I'm not going to go into the details of all of that now because I'm not that much of a nerd about it, but if you really want to know, just Google it. Now, despite Paul mainly using the 63 bass for the rest of the Beatles' career, the 61 bass did see the light of day again. Paul, after having it repaired and resprayed in a new sunburnt finish, used it for a promotional video of Revolution in 1968. And you can see it being used in both Michael Lindsay Hogg's and Peter Jackson's documentaries of the Let It Be recordings. Actually, both the 61 and the 63 bass guitars are used in the Let It Be sessions. The earlier footage of these sessions tend to show Paul using the 61 bass guitar, whereas the later footage tends to show him using the 63 bass guitar. Because of this, people assumed that the bass must have been stolen from either Twickenham or EMI Studios. People, including me, because the video that I put out nearly a year ago now is just totally, completely inaccurate. For years, the story was that the bass had been stolen from a locker at the Let It Be sessions, sometime in 1969, along with George Harrison's Gretsch Tennessean and his second Rickenbacker 36012. This, for a long time, was the running theory. However, years later it came to light that the guitar had actually been stolen from the back of a van in Notting Hill in 1972. Ian Horn, a sound engineer who worked with McCartney and Wings, emailed a public appeal for the bass and revealed the bass was stolen sometime after 10pm on October the 10th 1972. 
from the Ladbroke Grove area of Notting Hill, West London. It was stolen from the back of a rented van while McCartney and Wings were getting ready for their first UK and European tour. They were ferrying equipment all over London, rehearsing and recording in different spaces. And on that particular night, they were all staying in Notting Hill, so the van was parked there overnight in the Ladbroke Grove area. The next morning, Ian found the padlock broken and the base had been stolen. He actually filed a police report about it that same day. For whatever reason though, the police report didn't surface until 50 years later. They must have spilt some coffee on it or something. The important thing is, the base was gone and wouldn't be seen for over 50 years. An amazing amount of rumours flew about concerning its location. Some thought it was stolen by a member of one of the many film crews who worked with the Beatles, and that they must have hid it amongst their film equipment. Some believed it was buried with the real Paul McCartney, who died in 1966, and some believed it was sold to an unsuspecting buyer and it sat in an attic or basement somewhere for years. And this actually turned out to be true. More on that in a bit. In 2016, an intriguing lead popped up claiming that the instrument could be somewhere in Ottawa, Canada. This all came about when a new biography was released, Paul McCartney, The Life by Philip Norman. Now, Philip was well known in music circles. He had written biographies for the likes of Elton John, John Lennon, and Eric Clapton. In his McCartney biography, he suggests that some information came to him from a trusted source, a Liverpool taxi driver named Peter Hodgson. Hodgson, whose family lived near the McCartney family for years, took it upon himself to track down the bass guitar. And he reckoned he tracked it down to Ottawa, and it was being held by someone called The Keeper. Philip did pass this information on to Paul McCartney, and Paul was skeptical about it, and alas, it didn't lead to anywhere. In 2019, Nick Wass, marketing manager at Hofner, started the campaign Hashtag Trace the Bass. Around the same time as Hashtag Trace the Bass, another search team, The Lost Bass Project, popped up as well. This would be the team who played the biggest role in tracking down the bass once and for all. According to their website, their major breakthrough came in 2023 when they confirmed that the bass had been stolen from that van in Notting Hill in 1972. They discovered that this information corresponded with a separate email they had received about the base being stolen. From this, they were able to track down exactly who stole the base. Now, the thief remains anonymous, because remember, the only goal in this was to reunite Paul with that base guitar, not to convict a thief. From there, they ascertained that the thief sold it to the landlord of the Admiral Blake pub in Ladbrook Grove, a man called Ronald Guest, a keen guitar collector. The bass most likely stayed in that family from 1972 until it was found. This breakthrough led to loads of media coverage on the TV and in newspapers, and it's because of this extra publicity that they were able to nail the whereabouts of the bass guitar once and for all. Kathy Guest is the wife of Ronald Guest, who has since sadly passed away. She knew that her husband had an extensive guitar collection, and after seeing the publicity from the Lost Bass Project, she decided to have a little rummage around. And that's when she found the base. All this time, it had been sat in the attic of a terraced house in Hastings on the south coast of England. I was cataloguing a number of guitars that I've got, and when I googled it, it immediately came up. That's when I thought, well, maybe this is it. When she realised, she contacted Paul McCartney's company sometime in 2023. From there, Nick Wass himself was able to authenticate it, and it was indeed the missing base. The bass guitar sadly did have some damage, the neck was cracked, the bridge was damaged, and the pickups didn't work anymore. But it's nothing that a little spruce up couldn't handle. Now, I said at the beginning that you wouldn't believe the distance that the guitar travelled, considering all these mad theories about where in the world it could be. In reality, it only travelled 100 miles, from Notting Hill to East Sussex, confined to the south of England, and that's it. Much more boring, I think, than being held for ransom by someone called The Keeper in Ottawa, Canada, but that's the reality. Now, around the same time that the bass was stolen, the early 70s, Led Zeppelin and Elvis were dominating the touring circuits across the globe. And the two giants of music crossed paths on multiple occasions. The details of the meeting, though, are quite surprising and a bit bonkers. You can click the video here to watch that one next.